this moment right now, the dancing, the dancing at Taylor Swift and the confetti coming down. He's a long ways away from a Super Bowl. <laughs> got to get through 17 weeks. Yeah. Got to get through the playoffs. Got to get to the game, and then you got to win the game. And then after the game, after the game, I don't, I don't want to do this, but I will. This is what you need. This is see the confetti. This yeah. is it's actually still stuck to the cleats. <laughs> this is what you need. You need the confetti stuck to the cleats so you can put it on your shelf for years to come, and then eventually, you know, donate that to some uh, NFL charity. But anyway, may at the end I, of the I day, just say, they, may I just say? Yes. That's one of the great flexes in the history of this show. No one has ever. Yes, I've seen is. a lot of flexes come through here. But to hold up a pair of cleats that still have Super Bowl championship confetti stuck in them <laughs> is one of the legendary uh, the flexes that we've ever seen. Hey, Fowler, I'm reading through <laughs> your good. notes. You don't sound convinced about Rodgers and the Jets either. No, Greeny, I'm going to take some more sugar. I'm going to pour it right in this Kool-Aid right here just for you because I'm receiving glowing reviews from people inside the Jets building on Aaron Rodgers' early returns. Phrase like, true leadership, excellent in every aspect, uh, vocal in meetings, spending extra time with wide receivers, as advertised. Those are the sort of texts that come back about Rodgers right now. The Jets are seeing somebody who has pedigree, who is setting a tone, and how long that lasts is entirely up to him. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you done? Just keep talking. I was enjoying that so much. Nikovich, what is that? <laughs> Stick that in your cup and drink it. Nikovich with your confetti <laughs> over there. <laughs> oh, and listen, I, I, as advertised, I think that's what they're supposed to say. What are they going to say? He went off on another retreat, a darkness retreat. Uh, he's, in, he's stuck in the room by himself with the lights off. Like, he's going to have to – all the reviews coming out of the Jets are going to say that because they just traded for him and they're paying him $100 million in the next two yeah. years. So, anyway, let's move on to the next topic. we got a long <laughs> way to go before the confetti's falling. Okay, Greeny? Fair enough. Okay. Well, Greeny, my mom and dad taught me early in life, anything that you want to do, you can do it. But you also have to speak things into existence. It's all about having a vision. You know, in Proverbs, it says, where there's no vision, the people will perish. Greeny, you wanted Aaron Rodgers as a New York Jet as your quarterback, right? You spoke it into existence. Now he's there. There's nothing different than what Aaron Rodgers is doing right now. You have to see things happening before they actually happen. And people on the side, people in your rear view, people in front of you might not have that same vision. It's fine. It's not meant for them. That's all I got to say on that, Greeny. Anyone who doesn't have that vision, we want them out today. I mean, literally, maybe yesterday. Aaron Rodgers <laughs> believes he's singing it. He's pouring the Kool-Aid, and everyone mm. Rob Ninkovich needs to drink it. What do you think of that? Don't believe the hype. I mean, Greeny, you're spewing out the hype every single day. The Jets, the Jets, Rodgers, Rodgers. I'm not doing any Bible verses. I said this in the first hour. I'm only going to quote Aerosmith. Dream on, because at this point right now, you got a long way to go. You got OTAs, mini camp, training camp, 17 weeks, playoffs. Then the playoffs, you got to get to your championship game. Then you got to win that game. Then you got to get to the Super Bowl. Then you got to win that one as well. And only at that point, only at that point will you be able to look up and see the confetti falling down. Until that point, you're just sipping on that real sugary Kool-Aid with extra a couple extra cups, sugar cups in that thing. But I do humble brag again. You want me to humble brag some more for yeah, you, Greeny? Show it to us. This yeah. is what you want. You want the you want the authentic. This is authentic confetti that is still stuck in the cleats from winning the Seattle Super, Super Bowl. So thank you, Malcolm Butler. Thank you for the interception. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> that's, a, that's another flex. That's another flex. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop flexing because I, no, no. I might he, catch here's a cramp the thing. in the He the showed bicep. that to us. Well, let me explain something, Ninko. Earlier this morning, you showed that to us, and I said it's an unbelievable flex to have Super Bowl confetti in your cleats on the shelf. Now you have doubled down by, by pointing out that you have to specify which Super Bowl it was. The fact that you have more than one of those doubles up on the flex. And what we actually realize, hey, Cindy, can we take his shot full? Give me Ninko full. You have more fascinating stuff on that shelf behind you. What else? Let's just play a game of what the heck does Ninko have on his shelf? What else do you have behind you over there? Okay. We have uh, a game ball for the Atlanta comeback, the comeback <laughs> game. That's pretty cool. I got a bunch of stuff up here. Um, 
I got, oh, this one's cool. So my senior year, I won, oh, I got a picture of my dog in here, but I won the MVP for, I was the Purdue Boilermaker Most Valuable Player. That was cool. <laughs> um, you, would, you wouldn't think, you wouldn't think a defensive end would be the MVP of the team, but I was. Um, I got some action figures. Got a little action <laughs> figure. We've already talked about that before. I have... I have a Super Bowl ring that I just leave there for fun. It's a good ambi- oh ambience. Um, we need to do a, a, a little signed quick documentary s- on the things behind signed Nico. Helmet. Yeah, he's got a signed helmet from one of the Super Bowls. Okay, Super we get it. Maybe the Jets will yeah. someday get to have the real confetti. Uh, Harry, what about that? That was against the Falcons. Yeah, Nico, uh, you didn't have to take it there. You could have left that part out of it. I'm here in Atlanta. Now I got to catch heat for what you said on Get Up this morning. People going to talk about, Harry, you didn't defend the Falcons. Yes, I did, Nico. I, th- I thought that was BS. You could have left the Falcons out of it. Okay, so maybe we'll have a fight during the break. We'll find out what happens. All right, so there's a lot of opinions out there. Let's get some information. Jeremy Fowler, what are we hearing about the newly um, created market for DeAndre Hopkins? Yeah, Greeny, I'm hearing the early interest is strong. He's pretty much heard from most of the league, people at least checking in on him. And I'm told that he's open for business to all 32 teams. There is not a short list or a list of contenders here. He's open to just getting a fair contract and going to the right spot. Now, I'm hearing that he's not on a hard and fast deadline here. Ideally, he'd like to sign before mini camps. So that'd be in the next few weeks. But if not, the hard deadline would be more like training camp in late July. So he's got a good six weeks here to figure all this out. No major rush. Teams I talked to believe that the Bills and the Chiefs will be involved and be a threat here to some extent. Bills and the Chiefs, that would mean the rich getting richer in the AFC. I'll point out that DeAndre Hopkins, while it feels like he's been around forever, is actually only 30 years old. He'll be 31 at the end of this week. Ninko, is, is he... Still a player who's good enough that he could tilt the balance of power, that him going in, in an AFC where everyone is so tightly jammed up, him going to KC or Buffalo or one of the other big teams, could that be the difference between that team getting to the Super Bowl? Yeah, he's definitely still an elite-level player. My only concern would be the volume. If he was going to be a 100-plus reception-type receiver, he has dealt with injuries in the past. So, he would be a great addition to a roster that already has a good receiving core, not just the focal point of our number one receiver, number one go-to guy. You would want to use him in gotta-have-it situations, the red zone, shot plays. You know his hands. He's always going to have hands. He's got the best hands in the NFL. Statistically, I think his drop rate's 1%. So if he lost a step, that's okay. If you lose a step here or there, you can still make up for your length, your catch radius, and your, your quality of catch. So the guy's elite. Whoever gets him, they're going to have an elite-level receiver, and they're going to help your team. So you're saying maybe winding up in a place where they have some good receivers already, maybe one yes. young, up-and-coming, potential great one, and a veteran quarterback who he might be excited to play with. <laughs> Cindy, put the picks up on the screen. We asked everybody on the crew, where's he going? I've got him going to the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Why not everybody? How about you, Harry Douglas? Well, the Jets, Greeny, I, I, I think they have a boatload of wide receivers at the moment. <laughs> I think, I think okay. they have enough. I'll take a shipload. I, I, there's, there's no, there's no, <laughs> what, what's larger than a boatload? I'll take the largest vessel that you have capable, and I'll take all of them. Okay. Go ahead, okay. Harry. How about KC? Why? Yeah, I like Kansas City because when you look at, you know, Travis Kelsey being the number one focal point, he's going to demand a lot of attention. That's going to be able to leave DeAndre Hopkins wide open. Plus, I love the way Patrick Mahomes, when the play isn't there and is broken down, he improvises. That means off-scripted plays. DeAndre Hopkins is a great 50-50 ball catcher. His catch radius is unbelievable, strong hands. And Greeny, he can still slap the hell out of a DB to get out of his mm-hmm. way, too. I mean, he, look, if he winds up playing with Mahomes, when you look at the way that team was constituted last year and there's no more Hardman there, he could put up insane numbers. I genuinely think insane. Did I see the Dolphins under your name, Ninko? Yeah, well, a couple days ago I said that the Patriots would be a spot. The Patriots would love to have D-Hop. But I'm going to go into his mind. As a older veteran player – You've already made a lot of money. He's made $114 million. So now he's looking, all right, I'm on the back half of this thing. Let me go somewhere 
beautiful with the palm trees and no state tax. Let me go down to Miami. Let me team up with the cheetah and defenses would have an absolute fit. How do you cover the Miami Dolphins receivers core if you see Tua and Tyree come out of the huddle and then you got D hop? It'd be impossible. And Jalen Waddle. Yeah, it would it would be ridiculous. I yeah. mean that, that that would be a bordering Ooh. on ridiculous. The, the the thought of it makes me unwell. Gary. And again, Fowler, you're looking at Buffalo. Yes, so you think that that feels like the most realistic possibility in the early conversations? I'm going Bills. That offense would be spicy with Stephon Diggs, new tight end Dalton Kincaid, and DeAndre Hopkins as that matchup inside or outside. The Bills are so close, averaging nearly 12 wins per game over the la- or per year over the last four years. They're ready to make this happen. Chiefs already spent on left tackle Donovan Smith, drained up some of their salary cap, so it could be tough. Likely or unlikely that Tom Brady comes out of retirement and plays for the Raiders? Unlikely, very unlikely. I'm not about to create this whole new thing. Oh, Tom Brady's coming out of retirement. No, that's unlikely. He's going to be upstairs, probably in a nice office. Maybe he'd have some thoughts in his head. I can still do this thing, but it's unlikely. Fair enough. Harry, likely or unlikely, Dak and the Cowboys win the NFC East. Ooh, I'm going unlikely, and that's because, Greeny, there's a team in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, called the Philadelphia Eagles, and Mm -hmm. I thought that they've gotten better. I do not see the Dallas Cowboys winning this division because of Philly. I love what Jalen Hurts is as a quarterback, as a football player in the National Football League at the moment, so unlikely. All right, and then, Ninko, back to you. Likely or unlikely that your beloved New England Patriots finish last in the AFC East? (sighs) Oh. Why are you going to ask me this question? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say exactly what Bill would want me to say. That's likely. Yes, they want to be under the radar. They want to be the last team. (laughs) They want everyone to think that they're going to be the last place team in the division. So guess what? They can sneak up on people and surprise everyone. So likely. Let's make it likely. They got us right where they want us. All right. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.